is REZ 2022-03, Windy Hill Subdivision, located at 7532 Miller Bridge Road. This involves 34 acres. It is currently EA. The request is for RA, uh, and it has community well in set. Mr. Dillon. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Again, the request here from EA to RA in order to develop an 11-lot subdivision proposed lot sizes being 2.5 to 3.11 acres. It is within the rural service area and agricultural forestry character area. Conference plan guidance, RA zoning is listed as recommended. Uh, well, development strategy aims to maintain the rural character by limiting new development and promoting larger lot sizes. Median lot size of the surrounding properties within a one mile radius. Uh, sorry, it is within a groundwater recharge area and there are a few wetlands uh, touching the rear of the property. This is the proposed subdivision of the 11 lots. The two larger lots being over two and a half acres are in the right hand portion here. And there are storm water facilities on site as shown. This uh, graph, it's a little bit hard to see, uh, but it represents a one mile radius of the properties around the subject property. There's 151 lots, 95 of which are 10 acres or less. And 6.6 .6 is the median size for the lots. There is one parcel adjoining it across the street here, which is 300 plus acres, uh, which slightly skewed the data and was excluded from that previous graph. However, the median lot size of 6.6 .6 acres still stands. <coughs> you also note here, this is a map of the opposition. Last time we had a petition that was signed by over 303 uh, members. I do have that petition here. But this is the location of those signatories for you, for your reference. TRC did find the request consistent with the future land use character map, though inconsistent with the community goals and policies. And the development standards for lot width are different based on central versus public water system. Um, roughly 50 feet lot width minimum for, uh, or 100 feet lot width for community water, 150 feet lot width for individual wells. Soils have not been evaluated by the Department of Public Health or EPD at this time for compatibility. Uh, Overall, the Planning Commission recommended denial by a split vote of 8-3. Any questions for Mr. Dillon? <coughs> Would you say this is a uh, private well or something? Uh, the proposal as it stands, as, as it was submitted, was for a community water system. But the lots are large enough to accommodate private wells, though the soil suitability has not been determined by the Department of Public Health at this time. Thank you. Any other questions for Mr. Dillon? Okay. We'll now open up the public hearing portion of the meeting. Is there anyone in the audience that would like to speak in favor of this request? Please come forward and state your name and address for the record, please. My name is Don Powell. My address is 4705 Queensbury Way, Valdosta. Uh, I'd like to give you a a little history that back in the 80s when I was developing subdivisions and uh, and I, I got off in the building uh, some commercial buildings we built uh, <clears throat> myself and Terry Kelly we built uh, the New Life Baptist Church on all cycles uh, I went to then uh, Al Davis who was head of the Area Planning Commission. And he gave me one piece of advice. He said, if you try to do everything right, you'll never have any trouble with us. Now, we were rejected in December because we, we were given advice that we could, it would be well to go with uh, one and a quarter acres. Um, at the December meeting, it was suggested to us we, could, we go back to, I'll go up to two and a half, uh, which we did. Had it uh, resurveyed, and there were some changes that were made. It's curved, it's gutter, it's paved. Uh, it will have a community water system, and there is a deep well there now that will be a backup system to the community water system. Uh, last month, uh, at the Area Planning Commission, <coughs> morning of the hearing, I was diagnosed with COVID. I wasn't able to go to the hearing. I 
to get it uh, delayed and sent back. And I, we were told that uh, they didn't know the off party to take it off the docket. So we went ahead and went through. We were not able to give our, our side of the presentation and, and what we have done to change it, uh, which I think is, is not fair. But uh, after the December meeting, and there was, like they said, 350 petitioners, two and a half weeks after that meeting, I was approached by a Remax Realty, uh, the agent there, uh, where part of the same group had made an offer to buy our property. And for what reason was they given? Because they wanted to develop it. Yeah. Uh, uh, please, no comments. We restructured our plan uh, and <clears throat> to address the septic tank issue because it, it's in a reach uh, for the recharge area. Uh, we have put we are putting in a requirement that they be aerobic septic tanks which which the discharge is potable water. So there's very little bit of, of damage to the to any recharge. Uh, we discovered that the groundwater recharge area uh, is quite large. Uh, that area has uh, Pecan Road of Landfill, it has Kennerloo, it has Foxboro, it has the airport, it has Moody Air Force Base, and it has Dasher and Lake Park. Uh, we also discovered that within the a two mile radius there are already five, I'm sorry, four subdivisions that are anywhere from two acres to four acres that have already been given the variances. Uh, we, one thing we'd like to point out that wasn't, has never been pointed out, that the houses will be somewhere between three and five hundred thousand dollars a piece, which will increase the tax base seventy to eighty thousand, I mean seventy to a hundred thousand dollars a year. Uh, we've met all the requirements, and Mr. Powell, just about out of time. Yes, sir. Sure. Uh, Jesse Bush, twenty nine forty four Dash Johnson Road, is here for us on this engineering. I just wanted to say just one comment. You know, Mr. Powell has the ability to develop this subdivision regardless of DA or RA zoning. So I think primarily today what we're talking about is we're not talking about the condition of the road. We're not talking about groundwater recharge area. We're not talking about whether or not the county can provide services to this community. Because I believe in our county, I believe in the people that we have here, I believe in the office staff. I, I believe we have a good community that can provide services. The only question that we're talking about today is whether we're going to build a community that's got six homes in it or whether we're going to build a community that's got 12 homes in it. So the, the question is whether or not Lowndes County can provide services to build an additional six homes for this place. It's not about rural versus residential or agricultural. These two and a half acre lots, I grew up on a two and a half acre lot. We had horses, we had pigs, we farmed. There was nothing about doing away with agriculture just because you live on a two and a half acre lot. It's about having an opportunity for an additional six families to be able to build a tree house in the back door, be able to throw a ball in the yard. Gentlemen, you hear that? Yes, sir. Okay, your time is up. I've given you an extra minute, which I will also give the other side an extra minute. Thank you, sir. We, we appreciate it. Thank you. All right, is there anyone in the audience then that would like to speak in, op in opposition to this request? Mr. Cole, well, state your name and address for the record. Uh, Brad Colson, 2611 North Titus, from Boston. Uh, I'm here representing several neighbors, landowners, homeowners, who, as you saw on one of the slides that Jay put up, I believe it posed to them. We've been here at the Planning Commission twice here, the Planning Commission once with us before. Uh, and I ask all those folks just so you can 
see they're here to raise their hands at this time. Uh, you know, this property is within the agricultural forestry conservation territory, and that's not proposed to be changed in any fashion in the current provisions in the, uh, the plan. Uh, this zoning is permitted for sure, uh, but it's not appropriate for several reasons. You know, other than along Highway 122 or Tejara, the only development anywhere near here is the shallow ridge development. I handed up before I, before the meeting started uh, just a little graphic here that I think it's important to note about shallow ridge because it's been mentioned several times both by staff and the applicant. You know, that's a 120 acre property with 12 lots planned. It has 34 and a half acres of home lots and 70 and a half acres of conservation areas. All of those lots, while there are three acre lots with the conservation area, staff pointed out the first time this matter came up that there are well over six acres on average when you pull in the conservation area. So I think that's very important that that six acres is recognized. The other thing I'd like to talk to you about, the staff put this in their report, I can't really understand why, seem to support this application, and I, I don't, it, it's kind of out of character, and that is the property just to the north. They might mention that quarter mile to the north, there is a rural residential character area and several lots. I believe it was in slide two of Mr. Diller's presentation, if, if he can get that back in front of me. But when you look at all those lots, there's 25 parcels in there. If you subtract out, there's a little area in there that's all almost three acre lots. That was one family, and it's mostly owned by that family and not and out of the state. But the other 25 parcels are 188 acres total, and they average 7.52 acres. So even though that's rural residential, these lots are, are big. Most of them are minimum five acres, many larger than that. So I think that's important for you to understand. Um, you know, in general, development in this county, according to state goals, should be near existing urban areas, as we talked about, or on major roads or where county services are or will be. Uh, here, that's nowhere near. It's three to four miles to be higher to the largest big developments, the Creek Southwest on 22. Um, the applicant mentioned uh, that this was in the uh, groundwater recharge area. You know, there are increased requirements on the ULDC for that. There's been no mention of that in neither, either the application or the staff report. Um, and development should be minimized in that area. In addition, there are water drainage and retention areas that have been brought before the County uh, Planning Commission uh, and also this body. Heard from the, we, the GLPC at least has heard from adjacent property owners about how wet this track is and how commonplace flooding is across the <coughs> road. I can't see how the pavement, curb and guttering, and clearing all the all the trees are going to make that issue even better, even with drainage areas. Um, importantly, and the applicant brought this up, this is going to be a community water system. And personally, I've talked to every one of y'all, and every one of you has said to me, we don't want any more community water systems. So not when you make that decision, I think you really need to think about that issue because that can fall back on the county, as you know. And it's something that I've heard everybody say that I call the policy not uh, So in summary, there's nothing similar about this to any other area. And there's no need to disturb existing land use and growth patterns. There's no need to make drainage and flooding works. There's no need to build a groundwater build a groundwater recharge area. There's no need to place a future burden on the county or the community water system. There's no need to approve this zone. But there is a great need to, to listen to and understand the concerns of 350 residents who have all signed a petition, many of whom are here tonight, and, want, and are united that this should, should be opposed and the land use should stay the same in this area. So I would ask that you uh, deny the reason on that basis. I'm happy to answer any questions. Any questions for Mr. Paul? Thank you. All right, we have another minute and 25 seconds. Is there anyone else that would like to speak? Who, who's coming? Who's coming? You have one minute. One minute. One minute to save the community. Be quick. And quick. Spot zoning. That's what it is. Plain and clear where you reach out into the community and receive one spot in a rural community. We own 400 
27 acres in that community. Been there over 100 years, the property has. This development will change and set the character of that community, and it will be a precedent that a generation can't overcome. It's happened in Vildale. It's happened everywhere. My one minute's about up, and I, if I was alive, I can tell you about the character of this community. I've lived it. I'm a recipient of it. I owe this community a debt, and I intend to play it. Hey, thank you. And I'd like to end with one thing. Ecclesiastes. There's a time and place for everything. There's a time to die, weep, fight, and pray. And I pray you make the right decision. Thank yeah, you. That's all. Mr. Reddy, if you would, I, I didn't get you to actually gave my name. Name and address. All right. Elton D. Reddy, 7649 Webb Road. Okay. I Thanks, represent sir. the Reddy property. John L. Reddy, my brother. Thanks, sir. Thank you. All right, at this time I'll close the public hearing course of the meeting and commissioners, I'll turn it over to you for your consideration. <clears throat> motion to deny. Do we have a motion to deny the request? Second. We have a second. Any discussion? Hearing none, I'll call the vote. All in favor of the motion, please raise your hand. Motion unanimous. Stay with us or you're welcome to leave as well. So we'll take a minute and let you leave.